Hey there everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be showing you the newest Altenew Build-A-Flower release for July 2019, and this is the Camellia Japonica Build-A-Flower. It's absolutely beautiful, and I thought it would be a great opportunity for me to do a back-to-basics card-making video on how to layer stamps. So we've got one flower image with four layers here, and then there are two separate leaves, each with three layers. There's also a really beautiful uh, script word here, delightful, and then it's got a couple of uh, accoutrement sentiments that you can add on to it. I am going to show you, as I always do, the three-fold pamphlet that comes with the stamp set, and we're going to be focusing a lot here on this layering guide on the back. I'm going to show you how I use the layering guide to help me make sure that all of my layers are exactly where they're meant to be, and I get the best results when I'm doing my layered stamping. I find that using a stamp positioning tool allows me to get the best end results. So you'll need something like a Misty or this We Are Memory Keepers Precision Press Advance. There's also a Tim Holtz stamp uh, positioning stamp platform, but I'll be using my Mini Misty today because it's one of my absolute favorites and I alternate between the Mini Misty and the original size. So today on top of the Misty, I will be using, or in addition to the Misty, I will be using a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half piece of cardstock. I'll be using the Red Cosmos Mini Ink Cube Set by Altenew. I'll be using a pencil and then of course the stamps and the layer stamping guide. So you can see that it's layered A1, A2, A3, and A4, and this is to show you which set or which stamps go first, second, third, and fourth. So our first stamp is going to be A1, and you always want to start with your lightest color. So you're going to be layering all of these stamps on top of each other. So the lighter color goes on the bottom so that your second stamp will have a bit more dark tones or shadow tones, and then so on and so forth before your third and fourth layers. So after I went ahead and stamped that first layer, I'm going to bring in my layering guide and it's going to show me where I should be lining up the next layer. And you'll see those four lines, they're sort of like a deeper pink that shows you where you'll be lining up the next stamp. So I'm going to take a pencil and just make some really light arrows. And that way when I'm lining up my second stamp, I'll be able to look for the pieces that are to fit in with those arrows. So I'm going to bring you in close here and you can see that because these stamps are clear, you're able to see through them exactly where you need to line it up. Those arrows are really helpful for this second layer especially because there's nothing inside to line up with. So you really need to pay attention to where those spots are that will line up with your second layer. So now that I've got that lined up pretty perfectly, I'm going to take my next darkest shade and apply that to my second layer stamp. What you need to think about when you're layering is that each layer is a new cast of shadows and depth and dimension into the stamp. So your base layer is always going to be your highlight and then from then on you get darker. As you can see here on the inside, they have these yellow lines, and this is now where you're going to line up your third layer. As I said on the first layer, it's tough to line up a little bit harder because there's none of these ridges and edges on the inside like you can see here. So we had to use the outer edges to line up, but now there are lots of points where we can line up our third layer onto our second layer. So as you can see, I'm just sort of matching up these spots here with the different uh, curves that they have, and I'm just making sure that I can find that on my layer. So once I have, I just want to keep the layer uh, guide a little close to me so that I can make sure that I'm lining it up correctly. But again, you can see right through the stamp since it's clear. So you're able to just line those lines and curves up until they match really well and then you know that you've got it. It's very simple to line up, but some stamps and some layers are harder than others. I would say this is a very medium difficult 
set to line up only because there are so many different curves that you need to line up together. But once you line it up, it just clicks and you can see it working perfectly through the stamp. So again, I'm going to shut my misty door and then I'll use my next darkest ink to ink that up and stamp that on top of my second layer. So now I've got my three layers stamped and I'll be moving into my fourth and final layer, which is also the smallest stamp. Now this is going to be the absolute darkest shadows and the most, most depth and definition into the flower. So I'm finding these same curves and lines that I was lining up before, and this is exactly where I'm going to line up my fourth stamp as well. So I'm already familiar with these curves and lines since I had lined my previous stamp with and previous layer with these. So it's, it's fairly easy to find them again when I'm lay, layering my final fourth and final stamp. So now I'm just taking this again and you can see that I'm just rotating it a bit until I get it to where it fits. It's a lot of trial and error, but really what helps most is keeping that layering guide near you and making sure that it just clicks and lines up. You'll be able to see it when you get in there, but you can see I'm just highlighting here that V curve at the top. There's a little bit of like a crescent shape there a small curved line here and then a squiggly line sort of on that bottom right hand side. And you'll see once I go in with my darkest shade, this is really where it gets intense and this brings the entire image together. It's always my favorite to do the third and fourth layers because it really brings it together. I love the dimension in this flower and these are some of my favorite flowers, especially when they're in bouquets. They're just all completely full and I absolutely love the way it looks. You can see here it lined up perfectly. It looks exactly like it's supposed to. And here is the card that I created. I had to stamp this a few times and I also used tattered rose after masking off all of my flowers just to give a little bit more color and contrast while still complementing the red Cosmo colors. I hope that you have enjoyed the video. If you have, please remember to thumbs up and subscribe to see more inspiration from me. As always, all of the links to the products included in the video are in the description. And please head on over to the blog where you can hop along with us and win some great prizes if you're watching during the giveaway period. Thanks so much. I'll see you soon. Bye.